Hi, my name is Julius and welcome to IELTS Dragon. If you are new here, consider subscribing. I am posting videos related to the IELTS speaking test. And if it's not too much to ask, please like this video so that this video will be pushed to many students who are also preparing for their IELTS speaking test. Anyway, I will answer the recent part one topic practice questions in this video. There are 15 topics, uh, so make sure to watch from the very beginning until the end so that you can get plenty of ideas on how to answer the recent uh, part one uh, topic questions. Well, basically, uh, practice questions. Without further ado, let's begin. Let's talk about housework. Do you think your home is clean and tidy? Definitely. I hate a messy house and I can't live in such a place. My house is very organized and very clean that you can't see even a speck of dust. Uh, and to be honest with you, I'm so proud of it because my family and friends admire the orderliness and cleanliness of my house. Yes, it is. I make sure to spend time cleaning my house despite my busyness because it's comfortable living in a house when things are well arranged and clean. However, I admit that there are times when my house isn't that perfectly clean since I miss cleaning it as my schedule becomes out of hand. What housework do you like or dislike doing? I honestly enjoy cleaning the bathroom. I feel so satisfied seeing the toilet bowl and the sink look spick and spam. I don't know, I'm just obsessed with cleaning the comfort room. However, I hate washing the dishes because I find it boring and exhausting. Actually, I enjoy doing all kinds of house chores because I love cleaning my house. Well, when I was a kid, my mom trained us, her children, to do different house chores every weekend since she really believed that doing so is a must for us to be independent and responsible. And I really thank my mom for doing that as I'm able to take care of my house well. Did you do some house cleaning when you were young? As far as I can remember, I didn't do any house chores like cleaning the house when I was a grader because I have older siblings who do that. I started learning how to clean my room and our house when my older siblings moved out because they had to study in the city. I learned to do any kind of house chores when I became a teen since I was the only one who could help my mom at home. Definitely. As I've said, my mom trained us to do different house chores, and one of those is cleaning our entire house. At first, it was kind of tiring, but we all got used to doing it. Well, honestly, our house back then was not massive, so house cleaning was just a walk in the park. Do you help your family cook at home? Unfortunately not, because I wasn't born with a talent for cooking. Well, in all fairness, I tried learning how to cook in the past, but I just realized that it's not really my thing. I just can't force myself into something that I don't enjoy doing. So I just let my parents or my sister cook and enjoy whatever they prepare on the table. Yes, I really love helping my parents out in cooking because I'm able to learn the different cooking techniques that my mom or dad knows. So from time to time, I'm their kitchen assistant, and I enjoy doing that with them because aside from the fact that I can learn something from them, it's our way of bonding with each other. So you're stuck at 6.5, and you have been taking the exam many times already, and you're thinking that you really need someone to help you pass the IELTS speaking test. Now is the time that I would love to offer myself to you. I would love to provide a coaching session to you and help you identify your weaknesses. Or if you are interested in my reviewers that helped many students pass their IELTS speaking test, then I would also love to offer my reviewers to you. My reviewers are actually a product of my experience as a band 9 achiever and at the same time as an IELTS speaking coach. Just like you, I'm not a native English speaker, but that doesn't stop me from getting the highest band score in the IELTS speaking test. And that's simply because 
I was able to develop some strategies that helped me speak so naturally and confidently. So if you're interested in my reviewers and if you want me to coach you in order for you to pass the IELTS speaking test, then don't hesitate to send me an email. I will surely reply to all of your emails. So send your email today. Let's talk about birthdays. What do you usually do on your birthday? Well, normally I spend time with my family. We eat out in a fancy restaurant, which we never visit on ordinary days, and order those sumptuous foods. That's actually my treat for them, as I want to share my blessings with my beloved family. As I get older, my birthday is just very ordinary. There's nothing special about it except that I'm grateful for the gift of life that I'm given. However, when I was a kid, my parents used to take me to a toy shop and let me choose a toy that I really wanted. Then we went to a restaurant and ate something special. Well, now that I'm a grown-up man, I don't do anything extraordinary on my birthday. Do you think it is important for you to celebrate your birthday? I consider my birthday a special day, so for me, it is important to celebrate it since it only happens once a year. Besides, it's a gift of life. Uh, not everyone is given another year to live life, so I always make sure to treasure that wonderful day of my life by going out with my family or my friends. Well, as I've just said, my birthday is just pretty ordinary. I just normally express my gratitude to my God for giving me another year to live, learn about life, and understand my existence on earth. It's really fine with me if I don't spend my birthday in an extraordinary way, as I'm already content with the gift of life that I'm given. What did you do on your last birthday? Uh, the last birthday of mine was incredibly special. I didn't do the usual thing that I do on my birthday. Instead, I went on a trip on my own. It was actually my first time traveling by myself, and I can say that that was fun yet scary at the same time since I could only rely on myself. Uh, overall, that was empowering and one of the best birthday experiences I had. <laughs> there was nothing special at all. I was at home eating porridge in the morning and went to a bar to have a few drinks after having noodles as my dinner. I couldn't get home at that time to see my parents since air tickets were terribly expensive and I just couldn't afford them. Whose birthday do you think is the most important to celebrate in your country? Well, if we talk about families, everyone's birthday is important since we all value the gift of life. However, if we talk about significant people in our country who contributed value, I believe our national heroes' birthdays are incredibly important. We commemorate their birthdays as a sign of respect for what they did in our country, freeing us from colonizers. Well, undeniably, it's our parents' birthdays that are the most important to celebrate in this country. We do value their birthdays because they are the ones who give us life. Uh, they are the ones who bring us up and the ones who sacrifice their lives just to provide us with a comfortable life. It's just so right that we give importance to their birthdays. I'd like to congratulate students who recently passed the IELTS speaking test after using my reviewers and for hiring me as their IELTS speaking coach. Congratulations to Maricris Galve, Band 7.5, Colleen de la Cruz, Band 7, Judith Sibulangal, Band 7. And I also want to congratulate my viewer who passed the test, Skylar Barida, Band 7.5. Let's talk about science. Do you like science? Well, I love science. That's actually my favorite subject when I was a student. I did enjoy doing experiments and exploring anything that's related to science. In fact, I got straight A's in all of my science subjects in high school and college. 
For me, science is the most fascinating subject among other subjects in school as it teaches students about living creatures, the universe, and the environment. It's such a shame to admit this, but I'm not a big fan of science because I find it difficult, especially the two branches of science, chemistry and physics. When I was a student, I didn't do well in science, and I was one of those students in the class who barely got a passing grade during major exams. Which science subject is interesting to you? I love biology. Because of that subject, I got to understand how living creatures survive, interact with other creatures, and function in the environment. I still remember how fascinated I was learning about living organisms in that subject when I was a high school student. That subject undeniably piqued my curiosity. Although I wasn't interested in science when I was a student, as I found it hard, these days I've enjoyed learning about environmental science because of the National Geographic channel. Watching that channel has become a stress reliever as it helps me widen my understanding of living creatures, their habitat, the environment, and the like. All these things are new to me since they weren't taught in school when I was a student. What kinds of interesting things have you done with science? Wow, there's a lot. The first one is dissecting dead animals and understanding their internal organs. Aside from that, learning human anatomy and conducting some experiments on herbs to treat some diseases. Those are the most interesting things I did with science, and doing all those things when I was a student helped me develop investigative skills. Thanks to my teacher for letting us experience those amazing things in science. As I wasn't a fan of science when I was a student, I believe I need some time to recall the things that I did in science. Well, learning how to use a microscope and seeing those bacteria from the microscopic lens was incredibly fun and fascinating. Aside from that, I consider joining excursions like visiting science museums or laboratories as interesting things. Do you like watching science-related TV programs? Of course, I love watching those types of TV programs. Actually, I started watching science-related TV programs when I was an elementary student because my mom really wanted me to like science. Besides, she bought some DVDs of science movies or shows so I could watch those during my school breaks. These days, I'm a big fan of Discovery Channel and National Geographic. Yes, I do, but I only watch National Geographic. As I said earlier, that's the channel that helps me improve my mood, especially when I'm so exhausted from work. Perhaps if I can find another science-related TV program that is as entertaining and educational as National Geographic, I might uh, give it a shot. Let's talk about geography. Do you like learning about geography? Yes, I love learning about geography simply because I get to understand the Earth better, especially the environment, the movement of planets, different places on Earth, and things like that. I remember I was one of the top performing students in our geography class because I was just really into it. Well, I don't, but I also don't find it uninteresting. I mean, I can bear learning something about geography, but I won't be the kind of student who is really fascinated with that subject. I think I did okay when I was a student learning about geography as far as I can remember. Are you good at reading maps? Certainly. I started learning maps when I was a grader. There wasn't any Google map back then, so we simply used a paper map. I was able to memorize the different locations in our country, and that was incredibly fun because I imagined myself traveling to those different places. These days, I'm reliant on using Google Maps whenever I travel, and it has never failed me.
Honestly, I don't have a sense of direction, so I'm kind of stupid at reading maps. I don't know, but maybe I'm not an adventurous type of person. I'm the type of person who wants to be guided in the right direction instead of making an effort to understand what's on the map. <laughs> what did you learn about geography when you were a student? I learned lots of things about geography, such as exploration, the cultural, economic, political, and physical aspects of places across the globe, the relationship between people and uh, their environment, and many more. All of those are things that I learned in my geography class helped me understand my existence on this planet. And I must say that when one learns geography at a deep level, one will learn to love the planet Earth better than those who don't. I'm sorry, I don't think I remember a lot of things that I learned about geography when I was a student. However, I'm sure that I learned about the relationship between people and their environment and the physical aspects of the Earth. Well, a basic understanding of these things is a must, so people get to understand how they can contribute something valuable to the planet Earth. Would you visit a country because of its geographical location? Well, that'll be one of the reasons, but not really the main reason. I travel because I mainly want to eat local foods, meet local people, and experience their culture. Geographical location is important for me as a traveler, but not as important as those things I've mentioned. Well, I would. If the location is irresistibly beautiful, I will not hesitate to travel to that country. In fact, I really have Mongolia in my mind right now. The location of that country is superb, and I believe that it has an amazing culture, which I can also learn. Let's talk about names. Does your name have any special meaning? Oh, wow. Well, my name is a combination of my parents' names. Uh, that's special simply because I carry the name of my beloved parents, and I'm their only child whose name is a combination of theirs. Actually, the meaning behind my name is a great ruler. Isn't it awesome? Yes, and the meaning of my name is a gift of God. Well, my parents are devoted Christians, so all of us, their children, are named based on Christianity. I love my name, and I feel so blessed that my parents gave me such a wonderful name. Does anyone in your family have the same name as you? No, I'm the only one who has this name. This is special because, like I said, it's a combination of my mom's and dad's names. I love my name because it's unique and... I have never met anyone whose name is the same as mine. Well, there's none, but I have one distant relative whose name is the same as my name, and we get along with each other, and I can say that we have similarities. Sometimes it's very funny when our family has a reunion and he's present because when someone calls our name, we get confused about whom they're referring to. Are there any names that are more popular than others in your country? Well, I'm not so sure, but I can say that women's names such as Anne, Rose, and May are pretty common. As for men, Ryan and Daniel are also popular. I have met a lot of people since I was a grader whose names are those names I mentioned. I'm glad that my name is not one of those, as I find those names incredibly common. Yes, as the people in my country are mostly Christians, names that are in the Bible are undeniably popular. Names like Mary, John, James, Matthew, and Fatima are common. Well, those names have relevance in Christianity, so it's no wonder why a lot of parents choose any of those names for their children. Are there any differences between how parents in your country name their children now and in the past? Yes, I believe so because in the past, parents usually named their children in a form of combining their names just like what my parents did to come up with my name. However, in this new generation, a lot of parents name their children after a celebrity or a character in a movie. 
Well, I don't see any problem with that. I'm not sure about this, but I think there's no difference. The majority of new parents are still using Christian names to name their children like what parents did in the past. And for those who have a different religion, the way they name their offspring is mostly based on their own religion or their beliefs. So I don't think there's a change in the way new parents name their children as compared to the way parents in the past named their children. But let's talk about morning time. Do you like getting up early in the morning? No, I don't because I'm a night owl. I usually get out of bed at 11 a.m. since my work is at night time. Well, in all fairness, I tried getting up early in the past. However, I realized that I wasn't productive at all. I couldn't focus on my work since I always felt groggy. Yes, I really love getting up early in the morning because I can do a lot of things before other people in our family get up. Actually, I can focus on doing house chores and some things that I need to do for work since there isn't any distraction. I can't imagine myself getting up when it's already 10 or 11 in the morning. If I do that, I surely feel that I'm missing a lot of opportunities already. What do you usually do in the morning? Well, I don't do a lot since I usually wake up at 11 a.m. That's very late, so there's nothing much I can do except for taking a shower and preparing my brunch. I take a shower for 15 minutes, then cook my meal for about 30 minutes and have my meal. That's actually my morning routine. My early morning routine includes making my bed, meditating, taking a shower, cooking, and preparing for work. I've been doing this for the last 10 years and I couldn't be happier because doing all these things in the morning helps me master self-discipline. Do you spend your mornings doing the same things on both weekdays and weekends? No, I don't. Although I usually wake up late on weekdays, every weekend is different. I wake up at 9 in the morning so I can go to the gym as I only have weekends to exercise since I work on weekdays. It's sometimes tough to wake up earlier than usual, but I really have to do that as I want to take care of my body. I don't want to get fat and get some illnesses. Of course not. I only have weekends to be lazy. So on weekends, I get up at 7 in the morning, which is two hours late than my usual getting up time on weekdays. I normally go for a walk in the park for about an hour. After that, I head home and prepare my breakfast. Then I do my laundry and go out with friends. What did you do in the morning when you were little? Well, the usual things that children do, that is, waking up early and preparing myself to go to school. I needed to make sure that all of my assignments were ready before leaving home and had to eat breakfast and finish my food or else my mom would get mad at me. Uh, let me recall, well, on weekdays, I needed to wake up at 5.30 in the morning since I had to go to school before 7. And on weekends, I had to get up 1-2 to two hours later than my usual wake-up time on weekdays since obviously I didn't need to go to school. Actually, my mornings and weekends were always fun since my parents took me to the park and I could play with my friends there for quite a long time. Wow, remembering those days is bittersweet. Let's talk about puzzles. Did you do puzzles in your childhood? Yes, I did. I remember I enjoyed playing jigsaw puzzles, Rubik's Cubes, and Scrabble with my parents and siblings. We usually played with those puzzles when we had a holiday in our shack during summer break. My parents didn't want us to watch TV every time we have our holiday since they wanted us to really spend time with one another. That was lovely, actually. Of course, actually, my favorites are crossword puzzles and Sudoku puzzles. It was my mom who taught me how to answer crossword puzzles because she really wanted me to learn lots of vocabulary, which I'm so grateful for even after this day because my language skills really developed. 
As for Sudoku, I just got interested in it because I was so inspired by my friend who was really good at numbers. So he was very kind in teaching me how to solve Sudoku puzzles. Do you like doing word puzzles or number puzzles? I'm more into the latter because I love numbers. I enjoy solving mathematical problems or challenges as I'm really good at numbers. Well, I don't want to sound like I'm blowing my own horn, but to tell you the truth, I got a lot of awards in both elementary and high school for competing in number puzzles. Well, if that question was asked when I was a kid, for sure my answer would be word puzzles because I had a mentor who helped me do word puzzles and that's my mom. However, these days, I'm more interested in number puzzles as those types of puzzles help me develop my critical or logical thinking skills, which are so helpful in decision making. When do you play puzzles? I seldom play puzzles these days because I'm incredibly busy with my work and my personal affairs. I think the last time I played puzzles was last month. I was playing a word puzzle called Scrabble on my phone while I was waiting for my mom's arrival at the airport. I have installed some word and number puzzles on my smartphone, so I play one of those puzzles when I simply have nothing to do or when I need to wait for someone. It's actually my way of killing time or my way of entertaining myself so I don't feel like I waste my time waiting for someone or something. Do you think it is good for old people to do puzzles? Yes, I believe so because puzzles are a form of mental exercise. As we know, most elderly experience memory loss, so playing a number puzzle or a word puzzle will surely help their brain become active and make them improve their memory. Well, I'm not making this up. Uh, there are actual studies that have been done to support my claim. Definitely, all puzzles have benefits for players, most especially for the elderly. Playing with any kind of puzzle will surely enhance the memory of all people since those will make their brains active. Actually, I read an article that says those old people who play puzzles are less likely to experience dementia because their brain is being exercised. That really convinces me since my grandma has a sharp memory despite her age because her favorite pastime is playing number or word puzzles. Let's talk about snacks. What kinds of snacks do you like to eat? I love eating chips and I know it's not healthy, but I just can't help myself but devour those kinds of snacks. In fact, I store many kinds of chips of different flavors in our pantry and I eat them from time to time. As I'm a health conscious person, I make sure to eat healthy snacks such as nuts and fruits. I love eating almonds, pistachios, apples, and mangoes. They're kind of expensive compared to unhealthy snacks such as chips and chocolates but I'd rather invest in my health than spend more money on medications. Did you often eat snacks when you were young? Yes, I did. In fact, I was fat when I was a kid as I ate a lot of sweets such as chocolates, cakes, and candies during my snack time. I remember my parents oftentimes got mad at me because I really didn't listen to their warnings in terms of minimizing my consumption of sweets. I don't know, I was not obedient back then. Not that much, I only ate snacks during a recess in school. One was before lunch and the other one was at three in the afternoon. And when I didn't have school, I couldn't really eat a lot of snacks at home because my mom didn't want me to keep eating as she's afraid that I would gain so much weight. In school, I ate biscuits and some fruits and vegetables and if I was at home, I ate some chocolates and some pastries. When do you usually eat snacks now? Well, I eat snacks when I start to feel a bit hungry and it's not time for lunch or dinner yet. I can't miss eating a bit of snack because if I do, I experience hypotension. 
I shiver uncontrollably and it takes some time for me to recover. Because of that, I eat snacks when I feel the need as advised by my doctor. As I'm on a diet these days, I follow a regular schedule for eating snacks. I have my snacks at 9.30 in the morning and 3 in the afternoon. This is the schedule that I follow since this is recommended by my fitness coach. But sometimes I skip eating snacks, especially if I don't feel hungry at all. Do you think it's healthy for you to eat snacks? Absolutely. As I have a medical condition, I can't miss feeding myself with some snacks before having major meals. As I said, if I take my hungriness for granted, I just tremble and I get headaches. So eating some snacks is a great help for me not to experience that uneasiness. Yes, without a doubt, eating snacks, especially different kinds of nuts and dried fruits and meat, is healthy for me according to my fitness coach since they're all rich in nutrients. As he said, my body needs different kinds of nutrients in order for me to reach my fitness goal. So I'll keep eating some snacks as long as they are healthy for me. Let's talk about public transportation. What kind of public transportation do you usually take? Well, that depends on the situation. If I'm in a rush, I usually take a taxi for the obvious reason. It's faster than any other mode of transport. However, if I'm not in a hurry, I normally take a bus since it's the cheapest and it's way more accessible. To be honest with you, I rarely take public transport since I normally drive to work or when I go out with friends. However, if I go on a long trip with family or friends, I take a train or a plane depending on where I'm having my holiday. Well, actually, we have advanced modes of public transport in our country. So commuters have great options if they decide to take public transportation. Do most people in your country prefer public transportation? I'm not sure about this, but based on my observation, I think the majority of people in our country take public transportation. Honestly, not a lot of people can afford to have their own vehicle since people in our country are not as rich as those people living in developed nations. For that reason alone, I think the general public prefers public transport. I guess the percentage of people having their own cars is not that high in this country since, as I said, we have a great public transport system. So I believe a huge number of people prefer public transportation. That's actually great since we're not contributing so much to the air pollution problem. But I admit that I'm not one of those people since I drive my car every single day. When do you usually take public transportation? I take it every single day because I don't have a car. As I said, I take a taxi when I'm in a rush to go to work or to attend an appointment. And I take a bus regularly to go to work. Sometimes it's really tiring because I have to wait for 30 minutes since buses have a certain schedule that they strictly follow. As I've just mentioned, I take public transport when I have to go on a holiday or to have a long trip. I either take a plane or a train. But you know what? I really love taking a train, especially when I go to the countryside, since I'll be able to enjoy the spectacular and vast views of the place. So I actually do it in spring or autumn. Will there be more people taking public transportation in the future? I believe so because I think our modes of public transport in this country will surely be improved. I'm confident that our government will make some effort to modernize our public transport system to provide the best service to the general public. For sure, when that's achieved, more and more people will prefer taking public transport and I see it as a great step in protecting the environment very seriously. Actually, these days, a lot of people in this country prefer taking public transport since its system is amazingly advanced. So I can say that the next generation will also be taking 
any means of public transport as it's convenient and accessible. I reckon that in 10 years or 20 years, the general public will rely more on public transportation. Let's talk about singing. Do you like singing? Yes, I do, but sad to say, I don't have a good singing voice. I think I'm tone deaf, but that doesn't stop me from loving singing because singing is my way of relieving my stress. When I sing, I forget about my worries. Definitely not. Although I love singing to music and I have a wide interest in music genres, sadly, I can't carry a tune. I just hate my singing voice. How I wish I was born with an extraordinary singing voice. Have you ever learned how to sing? Well, I did learn when I was a child. I attended some voice lessons. However, I wasn't serious at that time. I was just enrolled by my mom so I could do something worthwhile every summer. Although I learned some techniques on how to sing, my singing voice <laughs> didn't dramatically improve. I guess I'm not meant to be a good singer. Yes, but it wasn't a professional voice lesson. I learned how to sing in our music class in elementary and high school since singing was part of our music class. It was enjoyable, however, my voice didn't transform into a voice of an angel. I've remained out of tune until this day. Who do you want to sing for? I love singing to my nieces and nephews because they're fun to be with, and at the same time, they enjoy singing. So every time I pay a visit to them, we watch some children's shows or Disney movies, and we sing all together. It's actually my way of bonding with them since I don't often see them since my work schedule is hectic. I sing for myself. I don't want to sing for someone or with someone else as I know that I can't carry a tune. I don't want my singing voice to annoy others if I shamelessly sing in front of other people. My singing voice is just monotone. Do you think singing can bring happiness to people? Yes, and that's irrefutable. It has been proven that singing can relieve one's stress or worries, and it can also produce happy hormones. Actually, there are many studies conducted about how singing improves the well-being of a person, and the results are incredibly positive. And that's one of the reasons why I sing with my nieces and nephews whenever I spend time with them. Yes, I believe so, because that is one of the best ways to change one's mood from being sad to happy. However, if the person singing doesn't have a good voice, or he has an irritating singing voice, I think the people who are listening to him won't be happy but annoyed. And I don't want people to feel that when they hear my singing voice, so I've decided not to sing for someone or with someone. I sing only when I'm alone. Let's talk about technology. What electronic devices have you bought lately? I haven't bought one recently because I don't have the need to get one. I have a functioning laptop, two smartphones, and home appliances. To be honest with you, I'm not crazy about electronic devices like some people who really need to queue early at a store when a new iPhone is released. Just last month, I bought a new Android phone because I got fed up with my old phone. It wasn't working well, perhaps because it was outdated. I had a phone for 10 years already, and from time to time, it froze. Also, I bought an air conditioner because I realized that my air conditioner consumed so much electricity. I bought an inverter air conditioner because it's energy saving. Is technology important in your life? Of course, I can't imagine my life without those necessary technological devices. Actually, my work is completely dependent on a computer, the internet, and a smartphone. Without these things, I don't think my life would be so comfortable or convenient. My life is great with technology.
Yes, definitely. And I don't think there's someone in this world who considers technology unimportant. You know, living in this digital age requires people to know and operate some technological devices to achieve a task in day-to-day -day life. Well, we're not living in a stone age, so the use of technology is incredibly important in our lives. Mm -hmm. Which do you use more often, computers or cell phones? I believe I use smartphone more than my computer because it's more convenient. I can reply to emails very easily and quickly. I can give a call to my clients and my co-workers. And I can do online banking with the use of applications. Well, I only use my computer if I need to type some documents and print them. Other than that, I rely on using my smartphone. Undeniably, I use my smartphone more often than my computer because I have my smartphone with me even during my days off. Yes, at work, I spend more time on my computer, but outside of my working time, I use my smartphone every hour and every minute. And I'm sure that I'm not the only one in this world who spends a great amount of time using his smartphone. What do you think are the trends in technology today compared to when you were young? Obviously, the use of social media and the responsible use of the internet. Well, these days, people are using social media to be entertained, informed, and educated. When I was young, we didn't have social media, and our way of entertaining or educating ourselves was either through watching a TV program or reading a book. Another trend in technology nowadays is exploiting the advancement of internet technology. What I mean by that is technology today is used for illegal activities such as hacking or stealing one's personal information. This is something I never experienced when I was young, but I have experienced these days. Well, working remotely just by using a computer and a good internet connection is a thing today that I had never expected would come into a reality when I was young. Aside from that, the existence of electric cars or self-driving cars that we see today is an amazing trend nowadays. Many years ago, these types of technology weren't existing, but perhaps some great minds at that time already thought about these things. Let's talk about sports programs. Do you like watching sports programs on TV? Definitely. I love it because that's one of my best stress relievers. I enjoy watching baseball, soccer, basketball, and boxing. In fact, I do it every weekend after I complete my house chores, and sometimes I invite some of my friends to come over to my house and spend time all together watching our favorite sports. Not at all. Unfortunately, watching sports programs either on TV or live isn't my cup of tea. I'd rather spend my free time doing my hobbies such as gardening or watching a movie. I just can't entertain myself watching sports programs and I believe that's simply because I'm not a sporty person. Do you like to watch live sports games? Of course, as I've just said, I'm fond of watching sports programs either on TV or live because that helps me relieve stress after working hard or dealing with mental exhaustion caused by my work. Well, the last time I watched a live sports event was in 2019 before the news about the pandemic broke out. And I'm looking forward to watching a live basketball game next month in our city. As I've just said, I don't have any interest in any sports event as I'm simply not entertained. However, if I get an invitation to watch David Beckham playing football, of course, I won't turn it down. I'd be stupid if I let that opportunity go. Who do you like to watch sports games with? I enjoy watching sports with my friends more than my family because they're as fanatic as I am. My family isn't as passionate as my friends when watching sports, so I won't be so thrilled. They aren't so expressive when supporting our favorite team, especially when the game is so exciting. What kinds of games do you expect to watch in the future? 
<laughs> without a doubt i'll still be watching the sports that i love watching these days basketball soccer boxing and baseball because these are all my favorite sports but perhaps i might watch another type of sport if i develop a new interest in other sports who knows let's talk about social media do you or your friends like using social media yes my friends and i enjoy using social media because everything that we see on social media is entertaining and educational we're fond of using TikTok, Facebook, and Twitter. In fact, most of our free time is spent on social media, and I know that it is sometimes unhealthy, but we can't help ourselves. Well, my friends love spending time on social media and posting the things that have happened in their lives to let their friends and other people know about them. However, I'm not like them, as I already gave up all my social media accounts years ago. I feel like uh, posting anything about my life on social media is seeking validation. And I realized that I don't need that since I'm confident about myself. Besides, I don't want people to know what's going on in my life. Do you think you or your friends use too much social media? Unfortunately, yes. I don't know. I think we're kind of addicted to it. We love using TikTok because it's fun as we can film ourselves dancing. As for Facebook and Twitter, we can express our thoughts or opinions about social or political issues freely, aside from the fact that we can learn some educational matters posted at those social media sites. Well, perhaps my friends do, but I don't since I have no social media account. Lately, I don't really know what's going on with the life of those people whom I know. Well, except for my best friends since we talk from time to time. But anyway, I don't really care about the life of other people usually posted on social media. Do you want to work in social media? Yes, because social media is a giant industry, which means there are numerous job opportunities. I believe I'll be able to utilize my communication, creativity, and editing skills if I work in that industry. Well, I'm actually thinking of working as a social media manager for big brands. No, that has never crossed my mind because my profession has nothing to do with social media. I'm a medical practitioner, so my skills will not match the skills needed by that industry. Besides, I don't use social media, so it'll be difficult for a social media company to hire someone who doesn't use any social media. What's the most popular social media platform in your country? Recently, I think TikTok since it has a wider audience. These days, uh, TikTok is not only for entertainment where people can see dances, but also for business. I see major companies or brands jump on the bandwagon to promote their products or services. They use that social media platform as their marketing tool since they can get more customers from that site. I'm not sure about this, but I guess it's YouTube because there are so many entertaining and educational videos uploaded on that site. I just heard that during the height of the pandemic, people's go-to platform to entertain or educate themselves was YouTube. I myself love YouTube as I get to entertain, inform, and educate myself without any cost. Let's talk about riding. Do you ride a lot? Yes, I do because my work involves writing important information. As a medical practitioner, I need to write down our patient's information and medical assessment or diagnosis. If I have a lot of patients, that means I have to write a lot. Well, I do, but not a lot since I have a computer to use at home. Also, I use a computer at work to type important documents for our clients. The only time that I need to write something by hand is when I need to sign some documents or when I do my journal. What do you like to write? I love writing letters because doing so is really personal and special. I mean, I love making an effort to express my feelings to someone special in my life. I think I'm old-fashioned and at the same time romantic. 
letter writing is one of my ways of showing how I really value the person I love. Well, I enjoy writing my manifestations in my journal. Many years ago, I learned that in order to successfully manifest certain things in life, one needs to write them by hand in a journal. Since then, I've been doing that and I couldn't be happier because 90% of what I wrote in my journal came into a reality. Do you prefer typing or handwriting? Of course, I prefer the former because it's much easier and it's more convenient. However, if we talk about letters, I prefer the latter for the same reason that I mentioned earlier. I believe that nothing beats a handwritten love letter. Don't you think so? Uh, that's a case-by-case -case basis. If it's something related to my work, well, I go for typing because it's easier since I'm a good typist. But if it's journaling or manifesting, without a doubt, I prefer handwriting to typing as it's highly likely that my manifestation would become a reality. Let's talk about weather. Do you prefer cold or hot weather? I absolutely prefer cold weather to hot weather because it's more comfortable. I hate hot weather because I sweat a lot and I feel discomfort that I can't work well. Besides, I easily get irritated and get headaches due to heat intensity and because of that i don't like summer days at all and that's a very easy question i prefer hot weather to cold weather i love hot weather because i enjoy sunny days it actually brightens my day and it makes me so inspired to do some water activities such as swimming or snorkeling well i tried living in a country where cold weather is extreme and I just loathed it because I just felt depressed. What's the weather like in the place where you live? Well, I'm lucky that our state doesn't have extreme weather conditions compared to other states where people can experience extreme cold and hot weather. The weather condition in our place is just mild. We have bearable cold and hot days and because of that, a lot of local tourists visit our place when they feel the discomfort of the weather that they have in their own states. Since I'm living in a tropical country, most of the time our weather is hot, but it's actually hotter during summertime. We sometimes reach 41 to 42 degrees Celsius, and honestly, that is extremely hot in my opinion. Well, I love summertime, but I'm not a fan of 42 degrees Celsius. That for me is unbearable, and I normally just stay at home when the weather is that hot. Do you check the weather forecast before going out? Yes, always. That's simply because I want to wear something that suits best uh, the weather condition of the day, and I need to be aware if there's a storm coming so I can be prepared. You know, it's better to prepare than to feel sorry. And it doesn't cost anything to check the weather before leaving the house anyway. Yes, I do, but not regularly since I'm living in a tropical country. Well, most of the time, the weather condition here doesn't change a lot. We have dry and rainy seasons, so we can expect what the weather is like almost every single day. It doesn't change that much. What do you think are the effects of climate change in recent years? I believe extreme weather conditions are the effects of climate change. I notice that during winter time, the weather is extremely cold, that some countries experience a negative 20 degrees Celsius or even more than that. And when it's summertime, a heat wave is inevitable in some parts of the world. Well, this is a price that we have to pay for not taking care of our planet. I really think the natural disasters that happen from time to time in different parts of the world are the common effects of climate change in recent years. Different countries experience different calamities such as hurricanes, typhoons, forest fires, drought, floods, and the like. Although the world experiences any of these, uh, world leaders don't make any serious effort to address the issue of climate change. 
all of them are just uh, paying lip service uh, to the world. So if you're interested in my reviewers and if you want me to coach you in order for you to pass the IELTS speaking test, then just send me an email. I will surely reply to your email. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. And if you find value in this video, consider subscribing or give me a like. I will be very happy if you subscribe to my video and if you give me a like. Until next time, have a lovely day. Bye.